Welcome everybody. My name is Rosie Sheldon and I work for TSG Training and I'll be presenting the webinar today. I trust you can all hear me. And just a bit of housekeeping first. Uh, during the presentation, you'll all be on mute, but if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box for the Q&A session afterwards. I'll be talking about the ISTQB AI testing course today. And if you want to know more, please do contact us. The next courses are on the 5th of September and the 3rd of October. This webinar is being recorded and it'll go straight onto our website shown here, tsg-training.co.uk. First, I'll introduce a bit about AI and machine learning before talking about how the course fits into the context of the ISTQB family. I'm not going to go through the syllabus in detail, but I'll pull out some interesting bits to give you a taster. AIs come of age. It's all around us if we've got eyes to see it. And what is meant by AI is also evolving over time. Optical character recognition was recognized and sorry, developed by Ray Kurzweil in the early 70s and was widely considered the first AI product, but now it's taken for granted and not recognized as machine learning. In 2019, small yellow self-driving buses were deployed in Berlin, making German's capital city the first in the country to use autonomous vehicles on the roads. And these little self-driving cars use AI to make immediate decisions using the data from the recent past. They use sensors to identify steep roads and traffic signals and people crossing the streets. The vehicles can then use this information to make better driving decisions and avoid accidents. The Face ID unlock on iPhones is an example of an AI application today, and it relies on facial recognition. The True Depth camera on the Apple device projects over 30,000 invisible dots to create a depth map of your face. And it also captures an infrared image. And after that, a machine learning algorithm compares the scan with previous facial data so it can determine whether to unlock the phone or device or not. Social media platforms such as Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram rely heavily on artificial intelligence for various tasks. And currently these social media platforms use AI to personalize what you see on your feeds. And the model identifies the user's interests and recommends similar content to keep them engaged. And now we come to chatbots. Getting queries answered directly from a customer representative can be very time consuming. And that's where artificial intelligence comes in. Computer scientists train chatbots, chat robots or chatbots to impersonate the conversational styles of customer representatives using natural language processing. Search algorithms ensure that the top results have the answers to our queries. Search companies usually include some type of quality control algorithm to recognize high quality content. It then provides a list of search results that best answer the query and offers the best user experience. So AI is here and it needs testing and it's a specialist area though, hence the new course. AI can be implemented using a wide range of technologies like fuzzy logic, reasoning techniques and machine learning. But this course focuses on machine learning. There are numerous machine learning techniques and some are shown here, like decision trees, random forests, linear regression and artificial neural networks. Artificial neural networks were initially intended to mimic the functioning of the human brain which can be thought of as uh, many connected biological neurons. Many neural networks are deep neural networks because they comprise of several layers. And I'm now going to compare how conventional systems are developed with machine learning based development process. So I'm going to start with developing conventional systems. 
you start with some form of requirements, user stories, functional spec, technical spec. Requirements are agreed with the customer, the software developer then designs and implements the solution in the code, which is then tested. And this code is then deployed to the target system. And with conventional systems, it's relatively easy for us to understand how the system transforms inputs into outputs. For a machine learning based development process, you still start with requirements, but let's think of these more as objectives. Then at a high level, the data scientist gathers training data and writes or requires machine learning algorithm. Next, the training data is fed to the machine learning algorithm, which uses the training data to create a machine learning model. And this model is predicting the right response given the data it's been trained on. And this automatically generated machine learning model is then deployed to the target system. The important point is that the deployed machine learning model code is not written by a developer, but instead it's generated from the machine learning algorithm code. This process will be covered more in the next slide, but before we leave this one, I do need to highlight that this slide is specifically about machine learning rather than other AI technologies. The important point is that the deployed machine learning model code is not written by a developer, but it's generated by the machine learning code algorithm. So this is the machine learning workflow from the syllabus. And as you can see, AI introduces special test levels for machine learning testing. The course steps through this workflow in detail uh, using practical exercises to support the theory and delegates download free open source tools and resources to do the practicals. It's a specialist area and it fits into the wider family of ISTQB courses as follows. So here's the ISTQB roadmap with the agile core and specialist streams shown there. The courses highlighted in orange are other courses that might interest you provided by TSG training. So initially, the focus after the foundation level certified tester course was the original core advanced level courses. The test manager course with its focus on skills and knowledge needed by test managers and test leads. The test analysis course, focusing on the business and functional testers and the technical test analyst course, focusing on the technical testers and test engineers. But then the agile stream with the newly available agile technical tester and the specialist stream were developed. And many testers have sat some of these courses, particularly the test automation engineer and the mobile application tester. The AI for testers course is, is part of the specialist stream. It's a specialist area, uh, giving new knowledge to technical testers, test engineers, typically using agile methodologies. And as you can see from the arrows, all certifications require the foundation certified tester as a prerequisite. The material for the AI testing course is taught over four days using slides, uh, 17 practical exercises, discussion and practice multiple choice questions. And this supports delegates prepare for the one hour, 40 multiple choice question exam that's set after the course. So these are the topics covered in the course. There are learning objectives against each chapter and also hands-on learning objectives covering most topics, but not the light blue ones.
And this is part of chapter two. Earlier, I showed you the core advanced level courses, one of which is the technical test analyst course, which gives a broad grounding in non-functional quality characteristics, white box testing and automation. But with the arrival of AI, a more specialist course was needed as, for instance, there are specialist tools and quality characteristics that are especially important for AI-based systems. In chapter two, these quality characteristics are looked at in detail. And I'm going to talk about some of the aspects concerning bias, repeated here from the previous slide in the model generation light blue box, there is a train the model box, which feeds into evaluate the model. The model should be evaluated by a subject matter expert. And if there's a mismatch between the training data distribution and the anticipated real data distribution, the predictions provided by the model will be flawed. The model will be biased, having been trained on poor quality data. We may deliberately change training data to counteract what's perceived by another, perhaps historical bias. For instance, if we use historical data to train a system which hires engineers, it's likely that it will be biased towards recruiting men, as historically the vast majority of engineers have been men. And to prevent the new system from being biased against hiring female engineers, we could modify the training data so that it appeared that historically male and female applicants were equally likely to be hired by changing the gender of some of the successful applicants from male to female. I'd like to talk more now about the train the model box. Here's a slide of some labelled training data. But the resultant model will be biased, having been trained on poor quality data. So this is training data for a classification system that identifies dogs and cats. And you can see that the training data has been sourced that covers cats and dogs lying down, sitting up on their own with the other. Ideally, as many scenarios as possible should be covered. And as you can see, the training data has been labeled cat and dog. But sometimes mistakes are made in the labeling itself. Was it mislabeled as the labeler was given poor instructions? or limited training? Was it wrongly labelled as they were working under pressure, made a mistake? Either way, here in the bottom right hand corner, of course, it's actually a cow, not a dog. So now unlabeled production data is used. And here, the dog has been correctly identified by the model as a dog, but this white cat has been identified as a dog due to the unbalanced data or maybe incomplete data. All examples of cats in the training data were black. Unbalanced data might result from inappropriate bias, maybe um, bias gender or ethnicity. I mean, one reason for incomplete data might just be human error. On the previous slide, I showed you issues arising from biased model resulting from mislabeled data and incomplete data, or maybe unbalanced data. I love black cats. My old cat was black, so I'm biased towards photos of black cats. It's what I like. It's what I'm used to. My photo selection is biased. So the quality of the training data is important due to its impact on the machine learning model. So the model might have reduced accuracy due to the training data, or it might be biased, or it might be compromised. So in summary, AI is here, so come and learn more about it. I went through a bit about how AI and machine learning systems are different, and that's why there's now a specialist course to the ISTQB scheme. The learning objectives and the course content are available on the TSG website, and the syllabus is on the ISTQB website.
I then highlighted some interesting angles of AI to give you a taster of what's covered. And I hope this has whetted your appetite and I look forward to seeing you on a course here at TSG Training. So thank you for joining me today. And if there's any questions, please do put them in chat. Otherwise, goodbye. Thank you.